All right, guys, we now have the eighth Marvel MCU Disney Plus show. I know these things just keep on coming and coming and coming and coming, but let's get into it. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? And welcome back to another episode of Just My Opinion for my She-Hulk Attorney at Law Disney Plus review. And if this is your first time finding me and you happen to like the video, please give me that thumbs up and consider subscribing. All right, guys, as far as a review is concerned, of course, I have not seen all episodes. As you can see back here, it's only episodes one through four. Not complaining at all. I'm very, very thankful. But just seeing the first four episodes, I still do feel that I had a fair assessment to see what the show is all about. As far as my expectations go, I mean, I don't know. I wasn't over the moon or ready to see this, but I know I did get excited when I found out that this show had nine episodes as opposed to six that we've been used to other than WandaVision, the first Disney Plus show. At that point in time, I was just kind of wondering, okay, like, are the episodes going to be long or going to be like 45, 50 minutes long? Or they're going to be 20, 25, 30 minutes. That's why they're stretching it out to nine episodes instead of six. As far as the character herself, I just know a little bit about her, that she's Bruce's cousin, that she had an accident, I believe, and she had a blood transfusion. I know the blood transfusion is from the comics, but I can't remember if it was an accident or some type of illness or incident. Someone can respectfully let me know in the comment section. However, when more and more news started coming out, when we just left San Diego Comic-Con a couple of months ago, or last month and we got the announcement that daredevil will be showing up in echo and daredevil will be getting an 18 episode series and then we started seeing trailers and tv spots of daredevil popping up in a new uniform and she hooked i was like man this is wonderful right here i cannot wait to see this show it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun it looks like there's going to be a lot of cameos but at the same time still focusing on jennifer walters the titular character in this she hulk series and i was thinking okay that's why they're stretching it out to nine episodes because they don't you know if it were just six they can just focus on tatiana on Jennifer, but since it's nine, that's giving them more room to bring in other characters as well. This is going to be like a courtroom drama where she's in a lawyer for a, a, a lawyer. She's a lawyer for superheroes. So up until the release, I began to get really, really, really excited. But before I get into all my nitty gritty, all my likes and dislikes, let me tell you exactly what this Disney Plus series is all about. Jennifer Walters navigates the complicated life of a single 30-something attorney who also happens to be a green six foot seven inch super powered Hulk. Now the great thing about this show and the way it starts off is you do not have to wait that long for them to get into all the She-Hulk aspects, the transformation, Hulk's blood, gamma radiation, etc. Within just a few minutes they're already telling you that story so if you're an unpatient person just rest assured you have nothing to worry about and it's really interesting because the first time i did watch this series as i said in my reaction video i was not really loving the series it just rubbed me the wrong way i kind of gave me iron man 2 vibes and also doctor strange multiverse of madness vibes what i mean is in iron man 2 remember when iron man and Rhodey war machine was fighting in the weight room it's possibly one of the worst scenes in the mcu the first time around i really didn't care for the scene between Mordo and Doctor Strange as they was trying to determine if he was a good guy or not with the Illuminati. Both of those instances, you have two characters fighting and it was just something that reminded me of that in the first episode and did really rub me the wrong way. As far as like jokes and stuff was concerned, this is not like a Taika Waititi show or a Taika Waititi fest, but I did feel that the show was very light and nothing was being taken seriously. And I just hated the way that they was handling some of the characters, not all of them, but at least a good half of them. I was just kind of scratching my head and I was ready to drag the show. However, I was speaking with another colleague. They said that they liked it that they enjoyed it because they was able to see it early as well and i gave it a second chance i did give it a round two and it's crazy because i ended up liking it so much more this second time around i don't know why but for some reason my opinion has never really changed that much from a 
first viewing to a second viewing. I mean, it has before, but for me, it was a complete 180. I was ready to say that this is one of the worst MCU Disney Plus shows that they've put out. But if I were to say that now, I would be incorrect because overall, this is a lot of fun. Besides them not taking too long to get to the She-Hulk aspects and the transformation, something else that I really did love about this is Tatiana Maslany herself. Now, I know that this is a popular actress because I hear so many other people raving about how great she is, but she is new to me. I am not that familiar with her work. And so if you are a big fan of hers, please sound off in the comment section below and let me know how passionate that you are but yeah here we go right here perry mason orphan black stronger and i, I know i didn't see stronger and destroyer i mean this, she got 75 credits so i guess i've just been living under a rock this whole time but i really did love her in the role of jennifer walters in the role of she hulk she is perfectly casted and i just loved her energy and her timing and her sarcasm and all that i mean she has a lot of dry humor and I am not familiar with which comic book character came up with this first, whether it was her or Daredevil, not Daredevil, Deadpool, excuse me, but they both break the fourth wall. There is a lot of fourth wall breaking in this series, and I really did enjoy it. I mean, it really did humanize her character without clocking you out like, oh, hey, what the hell is going on? You're talking to us now? You're talking to the camera? You're supposed to be talking to the people on the screen. No, I mean, it. It. it you, you know me. Sometimes I get really passionate in my reviews, and I was say to myself hey when i'm when i'm watching this movie or i'm watching the show i'm kind of confused like what the hell is going on i'm looking to my right and i'm looking to my left as if somebody's there that i can talk to and i'll still do it with nobody being there i felt that that's what jennifer was doing in the series when she was breaking the fourth wall and i just thought that was incredible now i also do love the relationship that she had with bruce in this series as well and that just kind of takes up the full first episode now i do have my criticisms about their interactions as well but i will get to that a little bit later in this review something else that i really did like was in episode two when she starts to interact with her family i don't know why but i kind of got some hawkeye vibes when i was seeing that as well i one of the things that i did like about hawkeye was the family aspect the family dynamic you know it was just really relatable and that's the same thing here in this she hulk show i really did like that a lot some of the supporting characters that surround her by the name of Ginger Gonzaga who plays Nikki Ramos I believe that is her paralegal in the show and I liked her energy as well I mean she's cool she's a woman that I would not mind hanging out with I'm just being honest with you it was just something about her character that I liked and her energy she's bouncing around like hey look what we got we got a big office and windows and a desk over here and yeah I hit him up I sent him a thirst trap he's going to be calling us in like five minutes it was just something about her character that I liked that made me smile and I hope that we do get more of her in the show as it proceeds now as far as the origin story that does come very fast i did like it for the most part but at the same time i felt that it was a bit rushed i wish they would have spent a little bit more time fleshing that out i know everybody is not too familiar with the origin of Hulk. I mean, some people are, but everybody isn't. And that was in 2008 when we got that. I'm not necessarily saying that I wanted a refresher, but I just kind of wanted them to flesh it out a little bit more. I mean, I'm not like a science expert, but I do find the stuff fascinating. And when they're in the laboratory talking all geek language and stuff like that, whether I can understand it or not, it's entertaining to me. And I did want a bit more of that in this series. Something else that I found fascinating is the news coverage of covering Jennifer Walters, this new superhero in the MCU and what the general reception is. Some people like it, some people don't. Some people are calling it woke culture and I'm not talking about in real life, I'm actually talking about in the series. And I like that because it is a reflection on life. If that really did happen, I mean, I don't wanna spoil anything here, but you know, there, there was an attack, not an attack, but some of the characters did address masculinity and saying, why are you taking the manhood, you know, from this character and, you know, transferring it over here. And I did like that too, because I just thought it was a nice reflection on real life. And also the training montages that we got in early in the season as well between Bruce and Jennifer as he's trying to teach her how to be the Hulk 
We saw that in the trailers a ton. I'm not spoiling anything for you here. Just one example when he's like, hey, I'm just throwing a little boulder and she throws a little further. Then he just with no effort just launches it into outer space. That's dope. I love a montage. I love origin stories. While it wasn't perfect in this series, it still did make me smile from ear to ear. And I do like some of the courtroom proceedings. I mean, that makes sense. That's what you should expect. I mean, the show is called Attorney at Law. She is a lawyer. She is an attorney. So she's going to be in the courtroom. Some of them did have great significance. As we see in the trailer, we do have Tim Roth back as Emil Blonsky, aka Abomination. I liked everything that I've saw with his character so far. Now, I will say there is something in the trailers, in the marketing material that does make me a bit nervous, but that's in the trailers. I haven't seen it in the first four episodes. And so what I see in the trailers may be completely out of context. But as far as those court proceedings with his character and him showing up in this show, I do like that a lot. Something else that I love about the show and her character that I forgot to mention is Jennifer doesn't want to be a superhero. You know, there are many people around the world that will love to be a superhero, but that's just not for everyone. Some people just love their nine to five job and there's nothing wrong with that. And now I'll just start to transition to some things that I really didn't care for in the series. After watching the trailer, I really was looking forward to the Hulk sex scene. I thought it'd be a lot of fun. I thought I'd get a lot of laughs, but it just kind of came across weird to me. I don't mind a woman being aggressive sometime, taking charge and making a move and just straddling a man if she wants to, if it calls for it. But seeing it now in Hulk form, I'm like, are you not concerned that you're going to break his stuff off? I mean, just dial it back a little bit. You know, I, it just really wasn't what I was expecting after I watched the trailers. But that may be a little bit nitpicky there, but it is something that kind of made me raise my eyebrow. Another thing that I really didn't care for is I was praising it just a second ago, talking about episode one and the montage and training that they had to go through. But at the same time, I felt that there was a bit too much bickering between Hulk and Jennifer in this series and that did come across a little bit annoying to me. There was some points in time where I just did not like Bruce. I'm like, bro, you're being annoying as hell. Like, chill out. Take a chill pill because you're just doing too much right now. You're doing the most. Sit your ass down. And also since this is a courtroom proceedings, some of the courtroom drama does have significance, like I said a moment ago with Emil Blonsky, aka Abomination. But some of the other courtroom proceedings, it has no significance at all. And it's not even funny. I don't know if they was trying to make you laugh or not. I said that this is not a Taika Waititi show, but if they was trying to land jokes during some of these scenes, I wasn't laughing. They were just kind of throw away and filler, if you ask me, just some of the stuff that she had to process in the courtroom. It just, there's no way, or maybe they could write it in, you know, to continue in the MC you but it's nothing that i'm looking forward to and i kind of wish we would have spent more time on something else now we do have cameos from other characters one that's in the trailers as well as benedict wong wong who is now the sorcerer supreme i will say that i liked his character in episode three but i did not like his character in episode four and i really didn't like episode four at all episodes one through three were at the very least bit a lot of fun but episode four rubbed me the wrong way especially with the way they're handling some of the characters aka Wong. Dude, you are the Sorcerer Supreme. The freaking Sorcerer Supreme. You're supposed to be one of the strongest people in the universe. And unless I just have some failed misunderstanding of the character. So with that said, you know, with all of your abilities and powers, it is just beyond me while you're going to other people seeking assistance that you shouldn't need. I don't want to spoil it for you here and I'll talk about it more when I go live or when I do start doing my episode recaps. But it would just really rub me in the wrong way. And I can already tell that there is going to be another running joke or recurring joke with another character and I'm just not here for it. I'm just like, okay, you do it once, you do it twice but if you're going to keep bringing this character back again that just has no significance whatsoever, it's going to rub me the wrong way. I don't like forced comedy. You know, it's if you're going to force it in, you got to make sure it's funny and right now it's just kind of a toss up as far as that's concerned. Another negative that I have does have to do with the CGI. The first trailer came out for this series. The whole internet was blasting this whole show like what the hell are y'all doing with the cgi this looks like crap and it does it did i mean and even i have bad eyes now they came out with another trailer after that it did seem fine but just 
being honest, the CGI is not horrible, but they could still do better. I mean, and I'm just kind of comparing this to Avengers Infinity War and Endgame Thanos. If you have a CGI character that looks that great, unfortunately, everything else after that has to be to that standard or higher. But if it dips, it will be noticeable. Again, it's not horrible, but I did notice it. And what's also funny is the Hulk's character, his CGI was better than Jennifer Walters in this. And I really don't understand that. One character is a derivative of the other. And so I don't know why it can look more fine and clean in one aspect, but not the other. And another thing, and I can't remember if I actually mentioned this before, but the episodes are very short. The longest one is about 30, 31 minutes. The next one is about 22 minutes. That's the shortest one. And those are without the credits. And so if you're wanting something long, you're not going to get it. And if you're expecting a lot of action in these first four episodes, episodes you're not going to get that as well still a great show still had a lot of fun you just have to make sure you tailor your expectations and put them in the right place and overall this is just a light show but i'm looking forward to how this is going to connect with the rest of the mcu on top of what they're doing already i will give my rating for this at the very very end but guys that is just my opinion and i want to thank you so much for tuning in if you did enjoy this video please go ahead and give me the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel helping me reach my next milestone of 50,000 subscribers and yes you did hear me earlier i will also be doing weekly recaps by myself just recordings and upload those as fast as i can when it releases but later on in the evening, probably about 6 p.m. CST, I will be doing a live show as well just to go over and engage with you guys. So make sure you tune in for that. And so if I had to rate She-Hulk attorney at law out of a 1 out of 10, i probably give it like a 7.5, 8 out of 10. But I, I think I'm going to stick with a 7.5 out of 10, a 7.5 out of 10. It's a lot of fun, and I think everybody should go check it out when it releases. But guys, again, I just want to thank you so much for tuning in. And before you go, don't forget... Then my name is Bernie Cadavery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.